Look at that steam. Eh, yes, God, we thank you. And may the frog be with you. First sip taste never disappoints. I risk scolding my tongue for the sake of first sip taste. It's worth it. Girl, you gotta get through this video. Can't drink all this coffee right here, girl. Hey book friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. We got a lot to catch up on this month. So we're just gonna be quick on the draw. Before I jump into May and the Southern Charm Readathon, let me go over the books I read in April because I didn't tell y'all whether I mean if you follow me on the good read, you can see it. But I I let let me just April books were mainly carryover books from March Mystery Madness and a couple of thrillers in there. Check out my good reads for all of the details. April was a pretty substantial do the graphics, Chrissy. Do the graphics. Books I read in April Rain Rain by Ann M. Martin. Echoes Among the Stones by Jamie Jo Wright. Iscariot by Tosca Lee. Lightfall, The Girl and the Galadrian. New Kid by Jerry Craft. Edge of Apocalypse by Tim LaHaye. Dune, The Waters of Kalani by Brian Herbert. Shiver by Allie Reynolds. Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Kohler Croft. But I gotta get to the deep. This month, your girl went intergalactic. Not in the way you think I would go into. What? I need some more coffee. I do have my tablet here. It is charging because you know I'm prepared, always prepared. Never missing a beat. Filming this in the morning, and your girl is full of energy and buzz. So this so. month was all about the Southern Charm Readathon, hosted by my girl, book lover Amanda, and wonderful co hosts that joined me as well Sky, Lindsay, Miriam, and Amy. I will link their channels down below. This month was absolutely amazing. So much fun. I read a lot of amazing books this month and some not so amazing. All of them completely outside of my comfort zone. I just thoroughly enjoyed this reading month. I actually read 11 books. So above my average, I DNF'd one book. So technically, I guess I read 12, but how I count my DNFs, if it fall, it fall. Okay, okay, we can continue. I just feel like I leveled up in my reading. I opened myself up to different types of books and that's what I really enjoy about the reading experience. That just makes it so much fun for me and I hope it's fun for you as well. This video is gonna be structured a little differently. I'm gonna talk about my DNF book and my one star books. Did y'all hear that? It's plural. There's just more than one star book. So, I mean, hey. And then I will go through and talk about the books by prompt. And spoiler alert, my favorite book of the month wasn't even part of the readathon. Let's get our beverages first. This, this is gonna be definitely in the minorities. The book I DNF this month, Jade Fire Gold by June C. L. Tan. This is for the prompt. Hey y'all, a book with more than one POV. This is a YA fantasy, dual perspectives, her destiny, his revenge. I DNF this book at 20%. It was nothing in particular. I think I was just a little bored and low key, pretty excited to get to some other books. This had been on my shelf for a couple years now. So I wanted to at least see what it was about and I hadn't heard much about this book I think it kind of squarely lands in the end man it's okay the 20% I did read not a lot of crazy content going on if it fall it fall hey I mean hey so now a couple of one star reads I usually will DNF a book before we'll give it a one star so if I do have low star ratings there is something significantly that I had an issue with or pass the point and no return and I needed to know the answer as to the why chicken and dumplings a book you think will be a comfort read by uh, family volume nine i read the eight uh, of these volumes and it was just always a comfort read for me so i was pretty excited to get into this manga first manga series i've actually read before so this was a huge disappointment specifically mission 59 this manga is broken up in different missions it alluded to child sexualization and it just made me very uncomfortable and i didn't i couldn't really get past it it was centered around anya's friend she was always at and grown anyway but I was prepared for her sass and her grown and being in adults conversations and stuff so I figured it was more along that thought it was gonna be more how the character Anya's friend was presented previously in the other eight books so I was prepared for that but I was not prepared for the child sexualization and it just made me very uncomfortable I did not understand why it was necessary so much so that the other missions around it just paled in comparison I can't say one way or another if this was because of a 
translation and culturally this is a Japanese manga and perhaps there's some other things. The fact that it was so outside of the normal art, the previous eight books, and that it was really misplaced in like the actual story. It just kind of came out of nowhere. So it's very shocking to me and it grieved me a lot. I didn't have a really good reading experience with this and I won't read any more. No thank um, you. The next book I gave one star to actually took me by surprise, Fourth Wing. Let, let's get some more. Mm -hmm. There may be some of y'all watching just to hear my thoughts on Fourth mm. Wing. That's okay. I watched all the videos about Fourth Wing too. That's why we're here in this situation we's in now. I won't tarry long with this because it's really not much to tarry long about outside of what I've already talked about in my Goodreads, but I'll link my Goodreads down below so you can see my extensive review of Fourth Wing. This book was completely viral. I have been hearing it, you know, in the book community. An interesting premise to me. Initially, I went into it thinking it was a young adult, but it ended up being categorized as new adult fantasy romance premise of dragons and heroine venture and a coming of age and found family i really enjoy those tropes in fantasy books and since i was kind of in my romance bag i said well let's see where it lands for me your girl manage those expectations it's ya so i didn't go in thinking it was like on some it, it won't hop so i won't go in there thinking it was on that level of adult fantasy but my expectations were fairly managed couldn't find the book anywhere so i actually was able to get the audiobook from my library i'm glad i did honey because if i would have paid that 27 dollars to barnes and over honey and taxes too on top of mm, 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 mm. no thank you i i was pretty appalled it came a point where it was like point of no return with oh and if i didn't tell y'all um the links of books will be linked in the description so you can get a synopsis i may or may not do a synopsis y'all been here before y'all know how i roll the plan that's not a plan that's a plan the prose was just very trite it's explicit everything i read some if you would consider rated r books at times this was beyond that in my opinion this was just egregious i don't understand the appeal there were a lot of comparisons to harry potter sarah j mass i won't be reading sarah j mass to divergent hunger games this clearly was just not for me it was a one star and i had to continue reading because i just needed to understand that maybe it would take a turn maybe not but at the end of the day it turns out i'm just not the audience for this and the fact that pros the characters the world building even the romance was just overhyped all have our books that we hype the books that we really enjoy that maybe a few people y'all forget i love dune and 50 people on the internet love that book and say it's one of the favorites of all time even though it is a favorite of all time and it is true subjectively speaking but do you understand what i mean there's definitely that framework with the books that are hype and the books that have their specific audience i think i fell completely totally outside of the minority for this book very few people actually giving like just a straight up what's in the book everyone was literally saying it was amazing and i was hoping to be with everybody that said it was amazing <laughs> i at least three started but to be hoodwinked and hijinked the premise behind the book was such a great potential i think the best thing about the book was the dragons because that was one of the things that drew me to the book and the premise behind it and i love reading dragons i love dragons and fantasy stories and i could tell the author really took more time with those aspects but the dragons didn't have a lot of page times but for why are we here if it's not about the dragons like what are we doing and then as for the romance aspect it depicted very unrealistic and toxic relationships including sexual relationships and non-sexual relationships just relationship dynamics social dynamics it was just i i it, but I will say I was not triggered or offended by this book but I was just blatantly annoyed and frustrated as to why this was so viral it was just overhyped underdeveloped and it was just disappointing to read so that's just the risk we take with reading viral books at times it could just been a fantastic marketing campaign marketing department for fourth wing they hey, they need a raise because they they did the thing the rest of the books that I read this month these are going to be in order of the prompts for the Southern Charm Readathon. Bless your heart, an emotional or heartwarming book. I picked to win a prince. I gave this five stars. This is a continuation from In Search of a Prince. If you have not read In Search of a Prince, it was one of my favorite books from 2022. Beautiful West African country of Alorle is the setting of love, a family, of faith, salvation. It is just so fantastic. I gave this book five stars for different reasons than I gave In Search of a Prince. In this book, the faith of the main characters in this book was so balanced and so transformative. And it just encouraged me themes of love is patient love is kind and reconciliation and it was just 
so good. Well, another thing that I really love, the Imaginary Country of Alorle is literally one of the most beautiful Imagine of Worlds I have read on page. Every time I opened this book, it was so immersive. Culture, the social politics, every character was so dimensional and so layered. I'll read anything in this world for real. Like it was absolutely phenomenal. For the Sweet Tea Prompt, a book with something sweet on it, the cover or a sweet story was Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. I tell you, this was was a scenic walk through Italy. This is a YA romance. I read this with Lindsay Lemus, my love bell, and book lover Amanda. I'm smiling thinking about this book. I gave it four stars. Follows a young girl who is experienced grief and is mourning the loss of a family member. Has to go to Italy uh. to live with a family and her adventures of self-discovery and resolving the past. There is some content about grief, the loss of a loved one, so just keep that in mind. It's not too heavy in this, but it's definitely something that you are dropped into in the first 15% of the book. I can't wait to read the other two. Love and Luck and Love and Olives. They over there somewhere. I don't know if you can see them in the front. You probably can't. Hot as Blue Blazes. A book with a hot setting. Live and Let Chat by Brie Baker. I gave this four and a half stars. It was such a good time. I will be continuing this series. This is my second cozy mystery series that I have committed to finishing. I'm excited. Setting of the Eastern Shore, Outer Banks, Virginia, North Carolina, vibes. I'm local to that area and I visited many of those small beach towns along the eastern shore and this just gave me everything I needed. Now where the chai tea at? I was looking for the chai tea reference the whole time. I, I couldn't find it. I, I could so I don't know what happened with the chai tea. That's still a mystery to me. This follows our heroine Everly Swan and she's come back to town and it's just everything you need. Food, mystery, and a man! <laughs> I really loved our heroine. She was a spunky hot mess but in a bless your heart kind of way. She don't mean no harm. She don't mean no harm. She's so sweet. And actually had some recipes at the back as well. Honey. Ice chai latte. Uh. Did I find the chai? I think the mystery is solved. Ice chai tea? I don't know, but still it, it, it won't in the words in the book, but it's great time. Heavens to Betsy. A mystery or thriller that will shock you. Alice Feeney's Rock, Paper, Scissors. I gave this four stars. If y'all saw in the video, I had another book. This book right here or wherever I'm gonna put this this this, this book right here. Um, it, 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 it. it didn't make the cut, but this did. <laughs> reading a couple of thrillers in April. I definitely was in my thriller bag. I hadn't read a psychological thriller in a while and Lindsay and my bestie Julie say girl, 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 this is good. I needed to know myself. I gave this three and a half stars but I rounded up to four stars. Ending was a bit disjointed for me. I'm still a little confused about the ending and like how it all connected but that was fine. I, 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 I need to know. Really good time. Marriage on the rock. They go on a vacation and things start happening that don't make no sense. Definitely some shockers but this is a psychological psychological thriller. There is language. There are some not so likable characters. So this is kind of borderline on a little bit of a rated R rating for a book, but it was still really good. If you read Lisa Jewell or Lucy Falling, if you read any of those books, I think you will really like this as well. Three and a half stars. I had a great time. XOXO, five stars. Y'all, up until this point in the reading month, when I read this book, it was literally my favorite book of the month, but then another one came in and it was a hey. But I give this book five stars. I smiled and giggled the entire time. Romance giggles. <laughs> K-pop star, meaning a, just a regular girl in LA and all the things that happened. 16, 17 year old Chrissy would have ate this up. And I really like the discussions and learning about the Korean culture. And speaking of that, Bearing Your Soul by Taryn Blake was really great. Nonfiction book. You want some real life K-pop drama? She got into her book for real. XOXO, five stars. I highly recommend it. It's literally so sweet. And I'm so glad I read it. It was a fantastic time. Howdy Partner, a book featuring French and family. The Circles of Seven, book three in the Dragons in our Miss series, five stars. It was so phenomenal. Billy and Molly and their journey to discover this age-old mystery of Arthurian retelling of dragons and heroes. The adventure continues. What I really, really, really enjoy about this is the fact that there's faith elements and there's science fiction elements and fantastical elements and everything's explained. Found those two elements just so interesting in how the 
author Brian Davis was able to just compose such a beautiful layered and fantastical entertaining story. It was very funny as well. As the series continues, we're actually are growing with the characters. The fact that they are surrounded by wise counsel and the adventure continues. I will definitely complete this series this year. I don't think I own that one though. Finding another reason to go buy a book. Girl, you need to stop. As the series continues, some violence and some tough topics, but it's handled so well and with at Circles of Seven, I highly recommend for the free space, Authentically Izzy by Pepper Basham. Pepper Basham is literally one of her favorite authors. My first time reading Pepper Basham. It was just such a delight. I gave this four stars for, again, romance giggles. It follows Lord of the Rings loving, book nerd, socially awkward, Isabella Edgewood and her journey for love and her nosy cousin always trying to set her up. But it worked out in her fate. Loved her cousins are kind of her found family aspect and are like adoptive brother and sister. Penelope and Luke and I really love characters. By far Luke is my favorite character even though he's a side character. I really loved his interactions with Izzy. Faith here and the romance. It was just so delightful and it's so great reading bookish friends favorite books because you get to know them. You get to see what kind of things they like. What gives them joy and to share that with them. It's just an absolutely amazing time. Jamaica Inn by Daphne Du Maurier. I buddy read this with Kelly from Kelly Reads A Lot. Hey girl, hey. I love buddy reading with Kelly. Probably gonna read a couple more books before the year is out. This is my first time reading a new war gothic classic. This was so good. About a girl, her mother passes away and she has to go live with her aunt and everything ain't what it seem up at Jamaica Inn. And why she living at an inn anyway? Why they ain't at a cottage or a house or something? Why I gotta be an inn? See that right there set me off as someone right. Like this is definitely a book I don't normally gravitate to because cautious Chrissy here caution in all seriousness and regard. A bookie, gothy. Eh. But then again, I read psychological thrillers. So how did the how to Tudo Mac? They don't. That's just me. I ain't got no answer for that. <laughs> Let's take a coffee break. May the fourth be with you was May. Obviously, that was a thing. But no, it's June. May the frost be with you. <laughs> to make it in. I really enjoyed the mysterious setting of this book. It's very atmospheric, very suspenseful. The reason why there's some mysterious and unsettling things happen at Jamaica and shocked me a little bit. Kind of a PG-13, a little bit of a rated R book in the sense of the verbal abuse that happens and the verbal language between the characters. Definitely in the early 1900s in that kind of time, women didn't have as much agency. Aside from that, I really enjoyed it. I Gotta Read Rebecca, which is the book Daphne du Maurier is most known for. And then my cousin Rachel, I need to read all of them. Gothic vibe, mysterious settings, deep fall, going to pawn. That's your thing. I think you're gonna really enjoy this. I certainly did. It surprised me. Speaking of surprises, finished most of my books probably about a few weeks into May. And so I had about a week left. When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer ended up being my favorite book of this month. Favorite, another one of Amanda's, her favorite. This book is 10 out of five stars, you guys. This is a historical, speculative, Christian romance. Definitely genre bending. I think it's more historical, a time traveling aspect. And how that is done, it blew my mind how Gabrielle Meyer was able to put that together. And on top of that, the faith element of trusting God and God's sovereignty and how we are to just follow him and walk by faith, even when there's no evidence. But the Lord worked everything for our good. But sometimes we got to get down the road to see that God had everything planned out. In the moment, the optics be terror. But when we get down the road, we can look back and see that the Lord who was faithful and kept us. This book says all of that and more. Deep in history, especially in Williamsburg, 1770. I'm from Virginia so Williamsburg probably most kids in my area went to visit. Authors started to talk about that and one of the timelines being in Williamsburg 1774 and the other one 1914 New York during the Gilded Age. Wow! It was just so amazing to see the character of Libby how she's able to maneuver through the decisions she has to make in these different timelines. This was just so good like I saw. I did not see any of it coming. I do like to predict things in books. I had no idea where this was going. I didn't know what was gonna happen. Isn't that like life? Isn't that like God? Before you know it, you've come through the storm. Lord, we thank you. This right here edified my faith, encouraged my heart to keep in the way of Christ. I highly recommend this book. It's so good. It's so good. So girl, it's so good. It's so good. So good. So good. Hey, read it. I actually read it with Sky, and we literally read it in one day. Sky did some reading sprints. I'll link her reading sprints down below. So she did reading sprints dedicated to the Sun Charm Rethon. Well, I read 20% and then the other 80% I finished, but majority of it was... <laughs> 
I was impacted. But I do have the second book and I plan on reading that later this year. Woo! Those are all the books that I read, I yeeted, ranted, all the things. Let me know in the comments if you participated in the Southern Charm Readathon and what your favorite book was. Always looking for recommendations before I go. What's next up? It's June 2nd. Uh. Editing Chrissy. She'll tell you what the real date is when you see it. I'm going to be participating in two reading challenges. Summer Bingo by Beautiful Minutia. She's been doing this summer bingo for three years and I think it's so fantastic. And also Jesus June. A challenge my book besties Lindsay and Sky put together. See, Lindsay Lemus coined this term, Jesus June, for us to remember God's promises and to focus on what he has done for us. I will link all of those things down below, including the reading prompt. Feel free to join in all the things. Let's get some reading, reading in. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. And I'll see y'all next time. Bye.